good question. Well, you know, I went to Taiwan 30 years ago. I didn't get to the mainland, but I, I did live in Beijing in 1986. So 21 years ago, I was living in Beijing, and I belonged to a Chinese work unit when I was teaching at the Chinese Academy of Social Sciences in Beijing. Uh, and, you know, even after 10 years of reform, uh, you still had rationing. You know, I had to get a ration, ration coupon in order to buy a bicycle. And because I was a foreign expert, I kind of jumped the queue and I had all the resentment of my coworkers. And, you know, I, I got a lot of, in a short time, I got a lot of insight into many of the problems with planned systems and rationing. And now if you go back to Beijing, uh, it's just unbelievable how open the economy is. You know, you can just walk into an ordinary supermarket, uh, buy all kinds of recognizable brands from around the world. You can buy Kellogg cereal. Uh, you can buy Australian wine cheaper than in the United States. Uh, you can buy a wide range of electronic products. You can go get an iPod Nano, more or less the same price you pay in the United States. Now, some of that may seem shallow, uh, and if you're a very rich country, you know, you, you can sneer a little bit at availability of electronics and food. Uh, but if you're a poor country where, in living memory, people were starving to death, it's quite a remarkable thing to go into markets and have a wide range of products you know, to be able to buy food, to be able to buy imported goods. Uh, this has really tremendously improved the material standing of people in China. And I think that's a key first stage of development, of, of economic development, is just meeting the basic material human needs. I, you know, I wouldn't want to exaggerate. So it is still a one-party system. And the most recent speeches of, you know, President Hu Jintao make it clear that the leadership envisages the continuation of a one-party system for the foreseeable future. But there has been some political change. Uh, there's a much more open dialogue about a, a, in many areas, not in every area, but for a lot of economic and environmental and social policy, there's a wide debate in the press and on university campuses, on television. You know, so I do a certain amount of live TV where we argue about environmental policies or social policies. So I think there's, there's more freedom to speak out about a range of issues, but not about every issue. I think there's more participation of ordinary people at the local level. You know, so you see lots of examples. And in the countryside, you have some villages you know, where they're actually electing the village head. And probably more importantly, cases where people vote on how to spend the small amount of village budget that there is. So you know, they have a little bit of money, and people vote on, do you want to improve the road uh, into town, or do you want to dig new wells, or do you want to improve the school? So I think that kind of participation at a very local level is, is important for getting good public services. And you definitely see that kind of participation both in cities and the countryside growing in China, but all within the context of a one-party system. <laughs>